Hey everybody, welcome to the Ashcan Podcast, uh, where we talk about uh, comic books, geek-related stuff, um, movies, um, wrestling, and a very assorted other topics. Uh, I'm Jason. Hey guys, I'm Phil. Now, you see this fresh face in front of you. This is James. Um, he's a, a gentleman that I've known for uh, a long time. Um, he is like us. He likes comic books and the movies and um, and wrestling. Um, and uh, so, and he, um, they kind of wanted to bring him in. It got. To, I, I kind of always had it in my head to br- to to bring him on board. Um, it became recently that it came really, really to the forefront because I started getting into wrestling again. And he's very well versed in it, like he watches it, like Phil does. Um, and I thought he'd be a great addition, um, a new voice, um, you know, very honest, um, uh, very knowledgeable. Um, so say hello to everybody, James. Hello, everyone. So. Uh, James and I met, we we used to work at the same place, and we became friends. Now, I'm going to tell a funny story, and this is my fault. So, Phil, my wife wanted to build a fence. So, we... For the dogs? No, 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 no. Just for, uh, like, a privacy fence? Sure. Barrier between houses. Between houses, yeah. And so... I go to I go to James. I'm like, hey James, have you ever put a, up a fence before? Like, cause I never done it. He's like, yeah, I've ha- like I've I've done it. Okay, so I you know, I tell my wife she buys all the stuff that we need, minus a couple pieces. And uh, in the hot Florida sun, what I thought was going to be a day job turned out to be weeks because of our work schedules. Yeah, about two weeks. About two weeks, right? Total. Yeah. And so, on my storage shed, there was a there there was a combination line, and I I'm not good with them at all. And uh, we needed shovels, and nobody was home that knew the combination. And in my panic, you know, I don't go to the store to go buy shovels. I don't, you know, I reach into the kitchen cabinet. And dig out two coffee mugs to help dig a hole with. So I walk up to James <laughs> with these two with this coffee mug. I hand it to him. And he had this like this incredulous face. It's like, what? Why am I a coffee mug? I'm like, yeah, start digging. <laughs> the ground was ate up with roots. Bad. Like it was like it, it was so bad. So we're sitting there with these coffee mugs, like digging holes for these damn posts to be stuck in so we could stick them out in there. Until somebody showed up, I'm like, hey, I need into the shed. (sighs) So so at one point, my wife, thinking we were done, and I'm not paying attention, she's like, she asked me if we're done everything so she could take what we didn't use back to Lowe's. Not thinking, I didn't look at anything. So I go, yeah, go ahead. He comes back over to he comes to so for us to work on it again, and the next thing I know, it's hey, where'd the uh, screws go? You know what happened to this? We can't find it, right? So I go in, I go, hey, honey, uh, where'd uh, the stuff go? Well, you told me to take it back. <laughs> I don't argue. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Dude say anything until you came outside to me screaming about it so anyway i don't say nothing to my wife i don't yell i calmly just okay honey i go out and it's just like i can't believe this like she returned said yes and she returned everything so we had to go run to lowe's to go pick everything up that we should return to finish out the fence 
and it was brutal. Like I had to get like a, a post digger and it was just like, you were never close enough or you're too far. One day, this man right here is going to get a mug that's going to say, don't ask Jason to dig a <laughs> post a fence, post hole, holes for a fence. <laughs> well, there are a few parts you're leaving out of that. The box. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Your dog hanging itself? Yeah, well, that's beside the point. That I tried to jump off the back of the truck. Yeah. <laughs> You're leaving out the most intricate parts of putting up a fence that oh, your wife did right. not get. I forgot. The four by fours or right. the cement to go in the plastic right. sleeve. So anyway, so this fence just has the sleeves. There's no post inside of it, and there's no there's no cement. So when we started, it's just like, well, we got to roll with what we have. You know, and I'm like, you're thinking, oh, this is not going to last very long. This fence has literally lasted three hurricanes. Has it not sways instead of breaks. And, yeah, it sways because there's nothing really, there's nothing. I mean, it's being held up by the bottom, but since there's no post, nothing's broke. Well, it's like three hurricanes. Yeah. Yeah. But, but you've also left out the lovely part of you hitting your head, getting so oh. pissed. That's that the was the last the day. Violence. The last day we worked on it. No, the, like one of the last times we worked on it, I there was a uh, like a row of um, lilac bushes, like tall ones. And I'm doing something, and I'm getting frustrated because I'm just, you know, I just want to be done with it. We're sweat, like we're just sweating to death. I come up and I I hit my head on a branch hard. I got so mad, I cut. It down and some other stuff down in such a manner that, like, I killed a lilac bush. You you cut down the tree? I know. I oh, cut okay. down, like, Red? was it a series of limbs? Like, thick limbs? <laughs> you cut some limbs, but the thing is, where we needed to put the post was the main root. The one that gave right. all its nutrients. And you right. just cut the thing out. Right. And, I, yeah, because you're having to cut out roots, too. Yeah. I mean, with, like... You took out three. Right. All three little, like, bushes with one root. Yeah, and they all died. Well, supposedly. But they still, you know, have leaves and stuff like that and grow. But, yeah, I, I killed one. I was so mad. <laughs> so, anyway. The thing that made you mad the most, and then we're finished with the fence thing, I believe. Right. right. Was that very last post, we got it in, you couldn't get it back out. You went oh, inside yeah. the house to get something. You come out, and I'm standing there like, I got it. You're like, what did you do? Well, yeah, because it was just like we're standing out there. You're just sweating. Like, it, you're drinking Gatorade, and the minute you get it down, like, it's gone. I couldn't physically get this damn post out of the ground. Even after kind of shoving on it to loosen it out of the ground, I couldn't get it. I go, I don't know why I went in the house. I went in the house. I come back. James had picked the thing straight up out of the ground and it had it like laid down or lean up on something and I was just like how did you do that because I was just standing there fighting with it and he just like made it look effortless this type of stuff yeah um yeah it's on for years <laughs> right yeah so we know each other for like you know like you and I have Phil and we've had you know we've, we've done some you know we've had a lot of good moments so um is there something that you want to talk about Phil uh let's see um nothing in particular it's been a fun week um uh i so if you we haven't talked about it before um i'm kind of like a, a toy dealer type uh um, the side I, I his side like, hustle like a toy vendor i go to different toy shows and yeah. and like to sell stuff you know here and there uh i've been kind of bulking up my inventory for uh a convention that's in Wisconsin that's uh, called DairyCon. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a toy show, and it's mostly uh, centered around Transformers and such. Um, so that'll be happening uh, in about a month, uh, two months right now. Sweet. Uh, if anybody's interested, just go to DairyCon.com, and you can see you know, how ridiculous 
and fun it really is. So. I'll put a link for that in the comments because I know we've mentioned that before on the show before the pandemic hit and the pandemic hit and it got shut down with a lot of other stuff. Yeah. So um, that's cool. Yeah, I uh, picked up some stuff. Um, I went to the, our local comic book shop and picked up some more stuff. I don't know if you want me to go in depth about that. Um, actually, hang on. A I have a question. Yeah. Do you still have the battle, the GI Joe battleship? Or excuse uh, me, the aircraft uh, carrier. The aircraft carrier. I still yeah. have that. I've only I've only taken it to one show so far. Did you um, get any bites on it? Uh, the people, uh, the guy who put on the show said that he was going to pick it up if no one got it, but he, he kind of backed out because he didn't sell right. so much. Right. But, um, no, a couple people are definitely interested. I'm right. going to be taking it to Derry Con. Right. So, James, Phil at a, uh, antique dealer that's local to him mm -hmm. found the air, the GI Joe aircraft carrier, almost intact. Nice. The 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 toy that all boys wanted when it came out, and few of us got because, like in my case, I didn't have the room to store it in my room. It was it's massive. Seven and a half feet long. Right. So, they better be giving me a. a an extra table so right yeah it's huge james like and he got one i think it's minus the admiral and the uh truck the hand truck thing yep right yep. yeah it's, that's it's and then some clips and yeah smaller vehicles right it, but it. it's but it but the, the the entire thing is pretty much full intact yeah i'll be bringing that um i'll be bringing a bunch of transformers um I'm gonna bring in some wrestling figures too. Oh, sweet! What kind? What do you got? Um, well, just this, just yesterday, I I nabbed up a bunch of AEW figures. Um, really? Uh, in fact, the, they had the whole uh, series three on the pegs, and I quickly grabbed them. Nice. Now, Walmart's not not been good as far as uh, getting their product out, right. but Target they they churn stuff out. Like crazy, right? So you got to give it to Target for, yeah, for really kind of pushing their stuff. So right. Um, what um, and I've been getting into like uh the Funko Pop stuff. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, I, for years I've stayed away from that because it's it's just like you know the it's resurrection hard. of the Beanie Babies, but right. Um. Uh, since they've been doing like um, uh, like GI Joe and Transformers lately, and you know I've kind of gotten some Star Wars stuff. Mm -hmm. I've kind of really been uh, doing that. Uh, I just got this in the in the mail yesterday. Uh, it's a uh, Transformers and GI Joe. I remember box, that. And it's got two figures in it. Oh, two wow. figures! Wow. Yeah. Uh, they just started nice. shipping these out. Wow. So I bought two of them because it's right. supposed to come with uh, one Transformer mm -hmm. versus uh, a bad, or it'll be wow. it'll be a good Transformer versus yeah. a bad GI Joe, mm -hmm. or a good GI Joe versus a bad Transformer. So right. this one came with Optimus Prime and Cobra Commander. Oh wow! That's and cool. I was kind of hoping that the other one that I bought. Had the same, but they're mystery boxes, and they were the same. So okay, cool. Yeah, that's I'll see really if cool. I can get on the boards right. and see if I can trade with somebody. What did you get at the comic book shop? Um, I picked up. They have a. They have a um, a couple cabinets that have like half off uh, graphic novels. Uh, I got. Ooh. Uh, Avengers. Okay. Like, uh, the original Jack Kirby, Stan Lee. Ooh. Uh, Starts, yeah. So right. ten bucks for this. Oh, that's not bad. That's Usually they go for about twenty or better. Right. Uh, this one has one through ten. Oh wow. So it'll show like first Giant Man, first Avenger team. Right. Uh, first Captain America, mm -hmm. or him joining the team. Right. Uh, first Kang, first Wonder Man. Yep. 
a lot of good stuff nice. in there. I, cool. I'm I'm halfway through now. Right. And the other thing that I picked up that I was looking at before and I showed you. Right. Was uh, Vision and the Scarlet Witch, uh, series one through twelve, all in perfect condition. I bet you those are going to go up. Uh, I already these are actually already sold on eBay. Really? Uh, I paid sixty dollars for it, and the guy just sent me one hundred and twenty, so I doubled it. Damn. Yeah. Happy about that. Wow. I wanted to read them, but they're they're so yeah. nice. So right. I'm just not gonna even touch it. Well, so certain things when you're doing like um like investment type pieces, you just you don't want to touch them. Right. You just want to leave them as they are and leave them alone, and that way you don't damage them. Um, yeah. I'll find the graphic novel or something later. Right. Um, can we talk about the two things we got, you and your wife, James? Hmm? When, it, when we went to uh, Gotham City Limit, when I got you and your wife something? Um, you don't have to find them. Yeah, yeah. I, I, we don't, yeah. You don't have to get them if you don't want to. No, I, they're just sitting in the other room. Okay, if you want to go grab them. So Give me the a filib- right back. Yeah. Okay, so the filibuster, um, James, so um, I, we went out in, into Jacksonville and went to a record store and went to this comic book shop called Gotham City Limits. Um, and again, I'm not, sp- I'm not paid by them. I'm not, we're not sponsored by them. Really great comic book shop. Really great uh, owner. And we're, we're digging around, and I'm like, hey, can I get – does Nikki want anything? His wife. You all right? Yeah. Oh, a poster okay. just randomly fell off my wall. Oh, no. So anyway, I, we, we got, we're in there, and, I'm like, and, I, and I asked him at the record store, too. I'm like, hey, if you, you want anything for your wife or you, just let me know, and I'll get it. We go to Com- Gotham City Limits. Records, she's particular. Yeah. So we go to Gotham City Limits, and I'm like, he's going to want something here. And he goes, so I'm like, hey, James, do you, if you want something for your missus or you? Just let me know. Okay. We're walking around. We're walking around. I'm, I'm, I've got my stack. I might show a couple, a couple of them off. And so James finds something for Nikki. Show him the one you got for, that you got Nikki, not yours, but Nikki's. Well. Don't forget, the first thing we found was a Bane shirt, but we couldn't find it in my sub. Right, yeah, he he's going to pick up a Bane shirt, um, the comic book character. He had a lot of really good shirts in there. I, I'm wearing one right now. Um, Frank Quietly's uh, Batman, I think. Yeah. Right. Let's nice. see. No, I can't barely see myself on there. Um, so, he, he finds something for Nikki. Yeah, which is to set it up as a blend of two of her favorite things from like the 80s and 90s period combined in one. We found her this. A Ghostbuster mashup with a My Little Pony. Oh. Yeah. Oh. So that's when he gets his wife. Now, it comes to him. I go, James, if you want anything for yourself, you know, let me know. It, blo- it didn't matter. You kept saying, are you sure you don't want anything? I'm like, So he mean? goes... And so the story, so he goes, I want to get that just to piss Nikki off. <laughs> he points to this. All right. A Harley this Harley Quinn deceased statue. So to piss his wife off. And it's in really good like it hasn't been opened or nothing. Oh cool. Yeah. 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 Um so I came out of there with a lot more. Give me you came st- out with a lot of stuff from everywhere that day. <laughs> I won't tell you how much I spent right now, but it was a lot of money. Let me let me grab Except a couple for things. One record you really wanted. Oh, I gotta tell this story before I go grab mine. So we're at this record store, and now he was there with a, a a guy that we both know, and this guy stumbles upon an edition of Jimi Hendrix's Hendrix's Electric Ladyland, but it's the edition that has the the 
unclothed women on it. That's really hard to find back then. It was like a reissue kind of collectible thing. They wanted a hundred dollars for it. He passes. I find it when we go there, and it wasn't where it was. You said it was on the wall, right? When we walked in. Well, it was supposed to be on the wall, but apparently when we took them, he had stuck it back there. Which, of course, something of that price point should be on that front wall. So anyway, I stumble upon this. I don't want it to listen to. I wanted it. I wanted it just for the collector's thing. And I knew if I came home with that, it would be World War Three. <laughs> with my wife and four and four gotta scratch that itch i had i how i had to walk away from that three times and i was so mad i had to leave it because it was just because you uh, automatically on ebay i would have gotten like an 80 dollar profit on it as as it stood probably maybe another hundred that i was just going to hang on to and i had to leave it anyway let me go grab mine All right, I'll pull. I pull out a couple. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna bring out everything. But um, so um, I picked up some kind of collected uh, edition of um, the True Lives of the Fabulous Killjoys, California, uh, by Gerard Way, Sean Simon, and Becky Cloonan. And this is a hardback edition. Um, I haven't had a chance to really look at it yet. Beautiful looking book. From what I could tell, the artwork looked really good. And I walked around the store like I wasn't sure if I wanted it. The teenage girl, some teenager came up to me as I was holding it and asked me if I'd read any of it. And she, I'm like, no. And, he, and she's like, that's that's a really good book. I say he, by the way. He was it was a he. Okay. Right, because the owner said his name because he almost put your stuff with his when you were ringing out. Right, yeah, because of some like things. Who's the publisher of that? Is that Image? Oddly enough, Dark, Dark, uh, Dark Horse. Ah, cool. This is the biggest book I've ever bought as far as comic books. So for a while now, I've been wanting to buy um, Mike Grell's um, Green Arrow Long Bunner, Long Ho Bunner, ugh, Longbow Hunters Saga. Shut up, James. And, and I wasn't sure how I was going to buy it, if I was going to buy singles or whatever. So we're walking around in a bookcase. I find this. The Green Arrow Longbow Hunter Saga Omnibus Volume 1. It's that thick. Whew. It's so heavy that this isn't light bathroom reading either it's it's really it's like it's it is a tome and if it wasn't for the fact that like 
I, I like, and I had to go buy this several times before I decided to pick it up. And I didn't, and thank God he had those discounts in the store. He had like store wide discounts on everything. And uh, it, it's probably you know, up there with one of with the most expensive comics I've ever bought. It's, it's thick. I mean, it's no joke. I don't know how I'm going to read this. I don't know how I'm going to protect this. Uh, get a bookmark for sure. Right. Smart Alec. Just... <laughs> so that's some of what I got for at the, at the store. It's really, really, really nice store. Really nice guy. He had a lot of um, unique things there. Um, one of them I'll do. I'm going to do a... Um, a review on that I stumbled on that he that he had um, exclusive access to. I don't know how he got it. I don't know if you have access to it where you're at, but the poster he had made. Okay, I guess I'm going to go into it. He had he somehow um, um, the Ninja Turtles um, last Ronin story book, story book, book that's going on right now or has gone on. He was able. Let me go find it. Damn it. I was going to do that as his own thing, too. Sorry. No, you're fine. I'll dig out the poster. <laughs> All right. So he was able to get an exclusive store cover that you can't find it anywhere else. And in doing so, when you bought a book, you got the poster of the of the cover. This is the cover. Yeah. Isn't that just awesome? It's going to hang in my office for sure. Um, I don't remember the artist's name. Um, but just in, he was talking to somebody about her and it, he, he mentioned it or something. And then I, he, I asked him about it and he told me, and I'm like, just throw that on my stack. So yeah, that's, uh, another, another one that I got that I'm going to do its own little thing. But yeah, so and it was it was really nice to go into a comic book store. Like, there's one that I go to locally here to me that they're really good. Um, but it was nice to go into a store, and that guy was so outgoing and so nice and so knowledgeable. Um, Gotham City Limits, like I said, we're not they're not indoor they they're not they're not paying us for anything. I just figured I'd throw their name out there. But anyway. Um, so yeah, um, do we want to talk about WandaVision? Um, I've only seen maybe like the first two episodes and I, I really dug what they were doing. Oof. Uh, I don't know how we can. I've seen it all the way through six. Yeah. He, James has seen all of them. I'm sure you've seen all of them, Phil. Yep. Okay. Yep. If we want to, let's just go ahead and talk about it because it's it's the hot thing on Disney Plus right now, um, outside of um, the Mandalorian. Well, it's, that's going to be a whole cluster when it comes back, but that's another discussion, uh, right? So, um, Wandavision, um, they decided to do um, an exclusive Wandavision show that we that Philip and I announced um, last year sometime. 
probably one of the most unique things I have seen done on TV. Um, it has this like leave it to beaver kind of um, uh, the Nelson's feel to it. As far as like what they were, you know, like the type of thing that they were going for in the black and white. But then you have like, you know, Wanda using her powers and the vision doing his thing. Jason. You are you are a babe in the woods right now. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, I would... But we all ca- still kind of are because. Right. E- even episode six or seven. You still don't exactly know what's happening. And it's supposed to be like a two-hour um, uh, thing to end the season, right? Or to end where they're going, what they're doing right now. Did uh, I hear that right? I thought I read that right, James. I think it was. It was. It's a known fact that it's like the whole the whole season is going to be six hours long. Um, they've done up to episode seven, um, thirty-seven minutes each, I think. Or some even less than that. Roughly so that kind of leaves either the last right. two episodes quite long, or the next episode will be thirty-seven, and then we'll get like almost an an over an hour in, in the last episode. I'm not sure what's going to happen. James, hmm. your turn. Say something. You know, I want to be smart enough when you tell me to say something. Well, you know. What do you think of it? It's great how it's presented, but like Phil was saying, you're kind of back there. Right. The thing is, great series. It's done great, but how you're getting the feel-good, leave-it-the-beaver classic family sitcom. Right. But it's like all those other things. It hides something darker behind all that as you go further along. Yeah, well, even at the end of um, episode one, they had it to where there was that computer, like somebody sitting at a computer. Right? Something like that. So some stuff will get kind of explained as it goes, but as as one door closes, you know, three more open. Right. Um. All my hope is is that they're able to do a proper House of M storyline. Oof. And James Maybe. and I have been talking. And then James and I had been talking. I we I had told him that a while a little while ago that I was hoping that's where it was going to go. And discussion in the shop were about the same. Right. So far, if you noticed, Phil in the first episode set when they were doing the uh, dinner for the bosses yes Mm -hmm. the first one the wine bottle the wording on it translated to house of m i don't know if you caught that or not uh i i did watch uh some some uh deep dive videos where you know they're they're looking for those easter eggs yeah, yeah, that was like a, a French wine that translated. Um, I, as you look in through a lot of the other episodes, too, you, you'll see that reoccurring kind of, like, pattern. You'll see, you know, a hexagonal shape, but you also see, like, a lot of stuff that looks like, you know, like it says M or, or you know, like a continuation of, of that letter. Right, just like they're yeah. saying the... The rumor is the commercials they show within the show are Easter eggs to the stuff that we've seen. Oh, wow. Yeah. Because they're colors. I just like what Disney Plus is doing with the properties. They haven't done any wrong. But the, I don't, has anybody seen the news about um, that um, Disney, Disney is about ready to get the rights reverted back to them for... Um, Jessica Jones and another Netflix Marvel thing. I saw that and I forget what the other one was. Was it Daredevil? I I heard a rumor that they were going to be using Charlie Cox in some future uh, Disney Plus 
um, projects. Uh, everyone's speculating that, yeah, he's going to be reprising his role as Daredevil, but not sure how or or when. But um, I, you know, I thought that Netflix was going to end up having to cancel uh, those those shows and like take it off their programming. But looking back, not that long ago, I I, I checked it and. They're all still there. Um, it's Jessica Jones and the Punisher. I thought that Netflix did a really good job with Daredevil, Punisher, Jessica Jones, but the other ones I didn't necessarily care for. I've been very outspoken about um, Power Fist. James knows. Yeah. I've been very Power outspoken Fist about Iron it. Fist. Iron Fist, excuse me, not Power Fist. I like Power Fist, but he's tied to J- Jessica Jones. But but Iron Fist, I had a huge issue with. I don't like the fact that they had that kid brought in. I, it just the way he portrayed the character, I just thought it was just absolute garbage. And my wife liked it, which is just crazy as shit. Like she she loved it, and I'm like, what do you mean? He's a like and I'm you know all my usual defenses and she she's not into comic books at all so she doesn't care but I I hated it still do I tried to give it a second chance and I wouldn't but then again James knows how I am too so so do you Phil stubborn yeah I hated it I just did it just well no it didn't feel right because like. I understand that, like, he supposedly, like, I would put him in his early 20s when he gets the inheritance. But, like, when he came back, he wasn't somebody that just didn't, like, kind of didn't know anything. Or I don't know how to word it. He Like, he, I, I, I put him as being more, like, in control of himself. And they had him, like, this feel of, like, he just felt like he wasn't even with the stuff like he just kind of was just the, this loose cannon yeah. I don't know that's I, I could be wrong too but I hated it uh, yeah he wasn't really relatable no uh, he didn't really look the part no um, a lot of the show was falling on that actor's shoulders yeah uh, with the story too and it, yeah mm-hmm. it just it was hard to really enjoy it a whole lot. I don't know. James, and, yeah. uh, there wasn't a whole lot of action either. Not um, the action like you were getting in Daredevil. Right. See, those fight sequences, right. those first, those first few are just you can't top them. I mean, when you think Iron Fist, you think Kung Fu and right. And I and I know there was some of that, but it, it just wasn't enough or the right it was it was poorly executed the the special effects didn't didn't help anything it just made it look like poorly done james well, i didn't get to see more than one episode of iron fist for the netflix versions but it kind of seemed like with the netflix versions of everything they were just trying to crank it out to be able to hit the MCU with Avengers and Defenders at some point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I agree with that. And unfortunately, we all know when it comes to gaming or anything else, you start cranking the same stuff year after year. It right. just leaves value. Yeah. Um, yeah, I didn't like it. But, but like I said, ever since Disney Plus grabbed stuff, The Mandalorian and its spinoffs, which I'm hoping will work out. Yeah. Because it seems to be there almost, too, it almost feels like there's too much with the Mandal- with the Star Wars properties that they're doing and the new, one, the new stuff. It's, it seems, it feels too much. I agree with having the Boba Fett one because that was just, that was awesome. And I don't want to give nothing away, but if you have not watched Mandalorian season two, mm-hmm. season two. Y- yeah, you're you're missing. 
that that end of season one, like you are missing. It's it's so well done, but then the whole thing with the you know the 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 uh, Ahsoka, 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 you know that uh, that was great to see. I like um oh what's her name um who plays her Dawson Rosario Dawson. yes Rosario Dawson she's more like one of my favorite actresses it's like she's fantastic but it just. I don't know. Like, I, I guess it's gonna be a wait and see thing. I hope they, that that um, was it. Kevin Feige leading that, or is it uh, Phil Filoni? Um, or Mando? I, yeah, it's. I think it's gonna be John Favreau with Dave yeah. Filoni, and right. I I think Dave Filoni is the one that's gonna be kind of heading up uh, Ahsoka later okay. on. Cool. Yeah, I just I don't want them I don't want to see that screwed with and I'm afraid of the shows may not have that care that the Mandalorian got. I yeah, I don't know. Thoughts? Um there is a lot that they're planning. Uh it, it, I I think the executives at Disney kind of have kind of taken it over. Uh, anything that has to do with Star Wars, like yeah, I don't think Lucasfilm has a firm like hold on what they're what they're well, doing, the- but they're 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 kind of doing it for 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 Disney. Well, theoretically, Lucasfilms doesn't have anything to do with anything since Disney bought them out. It's all Disney, even though they're the studio that it comes out of, and they're the group that 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 does do that the property the the right. properties. So, as long as as long as uh, these guys who are are in charge of what the Mandalorian, I I see that it's it looks like it's in good hands. Right. Has anybody seen the um, the um, the the trailer for um, Falcon and the Winter Soldier? Yes. Yeah. What did you think? Um. It it looks like a lot of action. Okay. It looks almost movie quality. Okay. Uh, we have no kind of like context of like what the story is just yet. Right. Um, but I'm I'm certainly gonna watch everything that they that they that they'll put out for sure. Yeah. Um, James, it looks like you feel the same way. Well, seeing the preview and the trailer for it. It makes it look like Falcon wasn't picked or ready to hold the shield because they have it in a giant case. Okay. And back in the comics, when Cap did disappear, Bucky took up the mantle for a while. Yeah. So I don't know if they're going to touch on that and split the series. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. It's hard to say. Um. So I like what they're doing. I like what Disney is doing, but I just have, and especially with the Marvel properties as well, they've done very well up to now. But with the stuff coming out for the Marvel properties, I I don't is whether it's Disney or in the movies, the MCU. I I hope that the care is still there. Yeah. Because you I mean you're talking about like movies to lead up to like another Avengers movies and you know the the Thor movie supposedly supposed to be you know I know it's either filmed or has been filmed or is or it's filming right now. It's filming, but like the people who had lesser parts are already done and right. in. Right. You know, uh, so I, it's gonna be interesting to see. I mean, but you know, WandaVision seems to be that it's doing very well so far. Um, but as we wait and see type of thing. Um for someone who's been kind of watching week by week and not like really binging it, um it has been a lot of fun having that week between each episode. Uh it, it gives you time to think about it, rewatch it. Um you know, just 
it, it's been fun just thinking all the the possibilities of what what the next episode is going to be like and right. and you know putting up all these theories and stuff that i i find that's been a lot of fun uh yeah. uh with this so and it's a character that's kind of it's known to us you know what i'm saying like the the couple but to largely they're not the big ones like cap like iron man like whatever you know name it mm -hmm. And it's an awkward one, too. Because you have Wanda, who is Magneto's daughter, and then you have the Vision, which is an anim... Like, a he's a, a robotic, animatronic thing. Son of all time. Uranium yeah. Synthoid. Right. So how do you do that? How do you deal with that? Because I don't even know if I ever knew, outside of that robotics thing, what the Vision exactly did. I know what Wanda does, but I the the vision was kind of a strange one. Um, so, as and if I remember, and just as an aside, James, you're a bigger Marvel guy than you are DC, right? Yep, it's I I, for, I, I, I forget that. Well, I like them both about right. equal, but the buddy I hung out with all through high school and everything, he was a big Marvel fan. Right. We okay. used to walk three miles one way from our house to a comic book shop. Oh, wow. And I mean, it's a small town in West Virginia, right. but yeah, there's still busy roads. Right. Well, yeah, because Phil had to drive into town to go to the one that we had we went to. Or or leave school or or when he got when we got out of school, we, we could go when um, the cubby hole was open. But, I mean, I think we have been going to that comic book shop from, like, actually maybe middle school. From 13 oh, wow. until we were 18. Oh, wow. Nice. Yeah. Cool. But, I mean, the guy that ran it, Dave, he knew what we were all into. Right. He would sit aside the ones for us. Oh, wow. That's cool. It sounds like Pat, uh, Phil. Yeah. Unfortunately, I had an evil ex. We've all had evil exes, but that's beside the point. <laughs> I had the Gambit series, the four-piece mini-series. The first one, that? right? Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, well, it was the first one with, I think it was the black cover with the gold lettering, if memory serves right. Oh, yeah. It was signed by the inker. Cool. By the... Unfortunately, DX decided to torch all my comics oh, because they were in the lector box. Man. And I'm like, really? I wouldn't have cared if you did destroy the radio that I left at your house, but you had to mess with the comics. Man. It's just. Right. Oh, man. Yeah, it's like my <laughs> collection. <laughs> it wasn't an extra. you guys the... remember them? Right. But you could order them out of the back of comics or online. They were like, one was a Marvel box that was orange for comic collecting. And the other was a blue and white DC that just boxes to hold them in. Uh -huh. Both of those full, and she torched them both. I, ooh, that's collector stuff right there. Damn. And including the... um. Not the Death of Superman comic, but the graphic novel was in there, too. Yeah. Lost a lot of stuff. Wow. What? Phil's got it. Yeah, he has it. I never owned it. I hate it. Like I've said, I mean, you, I mean we've had the conversation um, between all three of us at times. I didn't like it. I hated the death of Superman. It, it it felt like it was a, a money grab to keep them to, just to keep the publishing going for him. I hated it, and I never got into it. But then I have a then I have a massive complaint about you know the whole thing that he was dead when he was on um, the moon or an asteroid, yeah. and it was and it was given away in a panel. I still swear by that, and I don't know where I read it at, but yep. 
That's it. Wow. You want me to send this one to you? Run that by me again. Do you want it, James? Do you want me to send it to you? This one I got from uh, the the 50% 50 off uh, shelf also. Uh, right. This one's yeah. got a little bit of water damage, but you can still read through it. James? Yeah, if you don't mind. Yeah. Wow, look at yeah. that. Cool, cool. It's yours, man. I'll send All it right. To you. Sweet. Okay. We'll get let it, we'll, we'll get we'll get your we'll he'll get his address later, Phil, when we get done. Um. But yeah. So. Wow. But yeah, keep because I know in a pri- in a previous thing that we recorded, I forgot. I kind of for I forgot that you were more like Mar. You did DC, but you were more Marvel. Do DC, a more Marvel. Right. And I know you both probably remember it, but there was also Amalgam Comics. Uh, the the cross promotion, right? Yep. yep. Was that the one where Rob Liefeld did the infamous cover of Captain America with uh, breast? What? No. Uh, which, what was Amalgam? That was, was uh, Amalgam. DC and Marvel. Yeah. Uh, in the 90s. Okay, yeah, that was kind of late, mid to late 90s, right? Uh, Amalgam was the combination, like, of the worlds. So you did, you oh, had, like, well. like, a mixture of characters. I there. vaguely remember that, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I vaguely Dark. remember that. What's that, James? Batman and Wolverine were caught, put together as Dark Claw. Yep. Oh, wow. Uh, Clark ah, Kent and crazy. Steve Rogers were together as a uh, super right. soldier. Right. Wow. Yep. That's crazy. They had um, some weird. Right. Um, any other comic book stuff you want to talk about, Phil? Um. No. No. I'm no? good with that. Okay. So, uh, as was said earlier, if it wasn't said, um, uh, I'm getting back into watching wrestling now. Um, after a very, very long break from oh, a long hiatus from it, um, it just, I just got married and I just couldn't keep up with it anymore. Um, what's, what's your background, Jason? Mine? Like what, what, what did you start liking so, with wrestling? I don't know. Like I can't, I'm not exactly sure exactly what age it was, but I remember watching, um, World class championship wrestling. I remember watching um, the NWA, and I remember WWF before it ever kind of broke. I mean, as it was kind of starting to break when it was on the USA Network, like on uh, you know whatever day it was, and I watched WCW. Um, I remember watching um, the Von Erichs wrestle, Carrie especially. Um, gentleman Chris Adams, if if you guys know who he is. Yep. Um, I may or may not have seen Undertaker as the Red Tornado wrestle Bruiser Brody, but I don't, I don't, I can't recall that. I've seen footage of it. And I can't recall if I ever watched that as it as it came on TV. Oh my gosh! Um, those I watched out of a out of a out of um, the independents were more. Um, it was on channel like sixty in Chicago because that's where I grew. I grew up in Naperville. Uh, I remember watching WWF on um, like Fox, and then when they did the um, Saturday Night stuff. Yeah. On um, NBC on Saturday nights. Um, I remember seeing Dusty Rhodes wrestle and how he would like. I don't want to knock anything, but he would roll his roll his arms and then give somebody an elbow. Uh, Nikita Koloff. A lot of I know, and then when I moved to Wisconsin, when before I moved to Sparta, Phil. Yeah. When they had the when the AWA, um, I don't know if it was still going or they were able to get it up and going again out of Minnesota. They had they I was able to watch the AWA too. Cool. I I, I think I remember pay, da, Diamond Dallas Page when he was a manager on there. 
that's that's obscure for everybody else because I don't know if everybody else could see it um, nationwide because it was a territory thing. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. You know, Ric Flair. So, yeah, you remember a lot of the, you know, the background. I mean... Well, I mean, the thing you was... You remember it, when there was a lot of different territories and it wasn't just right. WWF. Well, I mean, the thing was, it was just one of those things, too. Like, my... like. So I have a, as I've said, like, I have a cousin who's, like, within a few years older than me. And he was watching him. And then I have um, twin cousins that are six months younger than me. And they watched the like, the I know the boys did. They watched it. And so when they moved about two streets, I don't remember where they were living before, but they lived two streets up from where I lived. Um, I was over there quite often. And in our buddy's house, and we would watch wrestling. You know, watching, you know, Ric Flair in his heyday. I mean, the, I mean, those promos, those classic promos. You know, it, you can't beat them. Like the shoes, the roll, the, like the ones that he's done where it's just like, these shoes were whatever dollar amount. You can't afford, like, you know, stuff like that. Or like, that's Rolex. And, he, you know, hold up a Rolex. We've all seen it. That's Rolex. Is any dollar amount, you know, you know, you know, high flying, you know, jet flying. You, when I got out of it, I there isn't a particular reason when I got out of it. I just got married and I just couldn't really keep up with it anymore. And it was mainly at this point WWE because I remember WCW, especially during the ratings wars. Before Bishop came on, when he came on, um, watching that pay per view where Sting, like for a better part of a year, didn't wrestle, didn't say anything, would just show up and point a bat at somebody and then disappear. Fun stuff. I, or I don't remember what year it was. There was a kind of a pay-per-view event that WCW was doing, or it was NWA, I don't remember which one it was. And it was Luger, I think, against Flair. And it and it became a story point where Luger had pins in his elbow. And it became this thing because apparently he supposedly knocked Rick Flair out. I don't remember the particulars of it, but like it was a bit it was a big issue because you know he had this metal in his elbow and he he screwed somebody up with it. Um I want to say it was his metal forearm, actually. Was it his forearm or was it his elbow? It was his forearm because he right. said he had a plate after a motorcycle accident, I Something think. Something like that, yeah. And it was like, you know, you had the wrestling magazines. I don't remember what they're, I don't remember what they're called. I, I read them. Um, and it just seemed like those guys had room to develop. And and make these, you know, make like I, you know, again, when I spent that brief time in Canada, I remember seeing Chris Jericho re- wrestle on the independent circuit up there with Benoit, um, Lance Storm, a bunch of guys. That's cool. and and high and like high school gymnasiums. Yeah, it's no, sh- I mean, it, and it was awesome. Like when he was known as the Lion Tamer, um, and it just seemed to be like, like when I would kind of try to dip my toe back into it, the WWE, their last, their law, their great loss is when they lost. I'm going to say when they lost, when, when, when Taker kind of started, stopped being a thing. Not before his retirement, before his retirement, but like when Austin left, the rock had left. Um, the they, end of the attitude era. Right, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that would be a good way to say that. And I, and as I told both these gentlemen um, off camera, we were visiting my son and and my old the my oldest son Ryan in Tampa, and my wife put on SmackDown. I couldn't watch it. I didn't know who anybody was. They didn't have their feel as a character to be identifiable or that you rooted for them, kind of a thing. But then all of a sudden, here comes. AEW. 
I'm not. I I don't watch all of them. I don't, I for sure don't watch WWE. There's some characters that I like, or I think that would be really cool. Um, one of them that comes to mind is um, Bray Wyatt and the Fiend. I think that would be like. I don't think. I think that doesn't get its the attention that it needs or i don't know if he's able to kind of be you know to uh, to do more with it Um, i think it's kind of holding the uh, i mean that i think that gimmick's kind of carrying a lot of the the show right now right they just don't have go ahead which of course it's hard to carry a show right now when the fiend's been off for two pay-per-views now that's or is it good. three? Well, but the way they're twisting it is the person that was with him, it seems like they're possessed by that spirit now. Mm. But the so, fiend yeah. came out by desperation. If you guys didn't actually know, Bray was actually on the chopping block to be released before yeah. the mass came about. Right, I and that that sounds about right with Vince. So, and I um, mean, was it something that he, James? Do you know if it was something that he pitched or he he pitched that idea? And I don't know how much you guys know on the background, but Bray's a legacy in wrestling. Yeah, oh yeah, he's so to be so to, to make to be clear about it, Bray is my my Mike Rotunda's son. Barry Wyndham's nephew. nephew, right, and those are are just I, I both of them I've watched. I remember watching Mar- Mike Rotunda when they kind of had him as like a like they're playing him off like he's a special operations guy. Mm-hmm. That I remember that that one that one that he did. Barry Wyndham, he was one of my favorite ones to watch because he was kind of long limbed. And he did that lariat move. His finishing move was a lariat move. He was real fun to watch. Um, yeah, it was almost yeah. uh, his lariat was almost like Stan Hansen's. Right, Hansen, I'm thinking. Right. So, and you know, there's a couple of concepts I like, but I'm not willing to sit there and go through like stuff that I I don't think that's going to entertain me or keep my attention. Now this is after like TNA. Like I wasn't, I didn't really get it. I was too. I was. It was in their early stuff there, and I didn't. I I got out of wrestling by that point. Um, I, but I've seen Jeff Jarrett wrestle. Um, long hair, short hair, whatever he was doing. Um, Austin before he ever made it big in WCW. And yeah. WCW, I think he wrestled in as well. You so when AEW comes up, and I remember seeing Dustin Russell before he became, you know, as we all seen before he became Gold Dust, trying to make a name for himself in WCW. The natural, the natural, the natural. You know, he had, and he was fun to watch too. And it's just like, so anyway, when AEW starts showing up and starts becoming like this thing before, even before Jericho signed on, that's cool. You know, and then when Cody once they wanted to be the uh, cornerstones for AEW before it started up, right? You know, like Cody. I didn't know who Cody was. I know, excuse me. I don't want to say I didn't know who he was. I know who he's the son of, but I didn't see him wrestle. Okay, I've seen him since. You just can't beat that. See, but if Phil's kept up with wrestling like me, we've seen Cody and like Legacy. Being trained and bred by Randy Orton with uh, Ted DiBiase's son, Ted DiBiase Jr. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, no disrespect to the man, but Vince has this habit of killing great prospects. He does. Yep. And that's let's, been mutually said. Let's push this giant monster, Lesnar, who can't talk on a mic and give him nope. Paul Heyman. He's. He but was that was enough. magic. Because of Heyman. Because of Heyman. Yep. Roman Reigns right now is being magic because of Heyman. 
Right. You know? Yeah, they're at a uh, point in your career. Well, Taz, but but my understanding was Taz got Heyman and Brock together because Taz realized that there was something there, but he couldn't he couldn't talk. I'm not saying he can't talk, but he couldn't he couldn't do a promo. Well, see, that's been the biggest hindrance I've seen in WWE. You've got Lesnar; he can't do a promo. No. You had he's in AEW now, but under WWE, Jack Swagger which is Jake Hager of AEW, he could not talk on the mic. So they yeah. gave him... Jeb Coulter. Thank you. I, I wanted to say Uncle Zeb, but that was wrong. Ugh. If you're wondering, the light's on a timer where I'm at. Oh, that's fine. Um, so, but and then when I started kind of looking at stuff, the more I looked at stuff, it was amazing. It was fun to watch. It didn't feel like it was this forced, contrived thing in AEW, and then, but it, but it, but it was just like, like to me, like I would be interested in watching like NXT maybe because of NXT. like the, the the because of the the, the way the, of who's in charge of the development there and who's in charge like who's overseeing it. Um, Hunter and I think Sean is working with Hunter as well, and NXT. Yep. But and you've got the classic of William Regal as the GM, right? You know, and I remember watching William Regal wrestle in like I think like WCW mm-hmm. and maybe WCW. I don't remember. I remember seeing WCW, well, but WCW him and Finley, the Iron Circle match, the cars in the parking lot. Oh yeah. So you know. And that's kind of why I started watching it again. Like, I'm not into Impact, but I saw that how they rolled out um, Black um, Tarus Uh with Decay. That was, that, the impact of how they, and he wrestled before, a year prior, he had an appearance with Rhino. Yep. And it was a good match. I, I just watched it. It's, it was a pretty good match. But they they roll him out with those guys, and the look, the presentation. You have the screen behind him. It looks like it's like you know, you know, you know, something of you know, like from an old movie, seventies movie that's about ready to come through the damn screen from like you know whatever dimension, and then you. Do you get these two, like these two people, Rosemary and Crazy Steve, and they both don't look like they're right in their heads. Rosemary's talking and she looks like she's just unbalanced. And they're like, well, we brought somebody to, for you to play with. And here comes this guy. Doesn't look human. Doesn't act human. And just goes through that, what, Caleb with a K? <laughs> yeah. Just was... they're talking like they were taught. They're talking. Well, we brought somebody to play with you. There's only one critique that I have with Rosemary. If she would learn how to do like a death metal kind of that death metal kind of growl or vocal effect, she would freak some people out. I'm just saying. But you haven't been watching long enough. No, no, no. But I mean, because I kind of saw her and it looked like she wanted to do it, but she didn't know how or she couldn't. And also, here comes this guy. You don't know who he. I don't know who he is. And he's just like, just beatings. Then Phil sends me one he did with Darby Allen and what PW PWG PWG yeah, and a fantastic match. Like oh. that guy knows how to work. Huh. I've watched the one with Darby Allen before. It's it, just, I mean, Phil sent it to you. He goes, "Oh yeah, well, watch this." And Darby's a good worker too. Oh he's my a gosh, smaller he's guy. Incredible. He's incredible. a smaller guy, but like they they both could do like complement each other so well. But I want to see Black uh, Black Truce go after Pac because they both got like that kind of real violent, brutal style. We have the kicks out of nowhere, coming off a rope, like the kind of the Japanese kind of flavor. Yeah. Um, I Either Black Tarus and Pack or uh, Black Tarus and Pentagon Junior. 
or whatever they're calling him now. You know, and but I want to see, but like I said, I would like to see that him go into AEW. So I guess it has to be, I, I, it kind of strangely roll into something that I wanted to talk about. And we'll go into how Philip got into it and you got into it. So uh, Sammy Guevara was supposed to have been the one where Black Tarus is now. It was a cross promotion thing that they were they were doing, and it was Sammy's turn. It was Sammy was supposed to have gone in there after his that. big row with um, the Inner Circle when he quit after he was calling uh, MJ, uh, MJF. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Out after, Jacob Friedman. Yeah, after his appearance at a pay per view, and he his character had had enough. So the background to it is that apparently Sammy did not like the story angle that he was supposed to do an impact. I thinking about it, like that doesn't look like it would be a good fit. Like no. him and Decay, it just doesn't it doesn't I seem- don't now here's the thing. I'm not necessarily sure if it would have been Decay because I read something today that it wasn't supposed to it wasn't Decay. Oh okay. he was supposed to take the X division title back to AEW. Ooh I, Who does that division title right now? It would be Impact has it. I don't know who specifically has it, but. I don't know. That's a drawback is I can't actually watch it down here. Yeah, right. So anyway, they. So and Sammy. And tur- he pissed Tony Khan off. And, and refusing to go work. Initially, like so, you know, Tony didn't really, Tony didn't really say anything about it. Impact initially had said that they understood his decision and they were fine and everything was okay, but apparently, Impact Wrestling was kind of upset with Sammy too. But they understood where he was coming from. But yeah. just, to, just, but just to look at like what they did with another guy completely, what is just incredible. Thoughts? Um, yeah, I think it's a a really good time to be no, well known as a like a as a strong independent um, worker. Um, I don't know if it's a good thing to be a strong company worker anymore. Right. Uh, I think uh, it, it it's more of a wrestlers game now than a promoter's game yeah. i don't know right like is if you if you're known by uh everybody to be a, a good independent worker and have put in your time and you know what how what to do and like it, the, the the wrestling world is yours to to get right. into um because right now you can go you can make 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 a name for yourself in different promotions, and all you have to have is the guy, you know, most guys behind you, and you can kind of make a name for yourself now. Right. Um. Like 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 private party, they were kind of doing a lot of independence, and they got noticed by the young bucks. They got brought in, and now they're. Uh, they're kind of cross promoting with Impact. It's it's you know guys are getting built up again, which is you know kind of a good way. I because I don't know if I really believe in the 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 NXT way. Um, what is the NXT way? Just give clarification. Well, or your observation. Uh, I feel like NXT brings in people who have been on the independents. Just, just like most other companies, um, you know, they'll they'll give them the tryouts and this and that, see if they go, you know. But I, I don't know if a lot of people get enough time or work with with the company, and and if they do good in NXT, then if they can they make it up to the main roster, some guys get really propelled into the main roster, and some guys don't. It's, I don't know. Um, some go back to NXT. Yeah, yeah. Some want to go back to NXT. Um, 
Huh. Or even someplace else. So. Yeah. Um. James, what do you? What do you? How do you? Do you feel the same way? Or. Uh, right now with wrestling, I think the best thing being done is an AEW trying to kick open that so-called forbidden door and cross promote. Right. Which they seem to be doing quite successfully. And I mean, like with Mox letting him go and oh, man. hold a title in Japan. Yeah. 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 And still come back and do it on the weekly when he came. Yeah. Okay, why don't we put a pin in this AEW talk? Because I don't, I think that's going to be the thing that we're going to talk about. And I want to get to everybody's um, thing. So, um, since James is more of the newer guys, James, how did you get into wrestling? Like, what's your earliest memories of, of watching and what you watched? And I got into it by complete accident. My mother was completely against wrestling. She went, was going out somewhere... And, I mean, my sister was over at her dad's. It was his weekend to have her. She's like, I want to take you to babysitters. Remember, don't watch any wrestling. And if I can remember right, I think it was in 84, get dropped off at the babysitters, and they're watching wrestling. And I've been watching ever since. Did you have any breaks at all? or? Uh, not really. Somehow I always found a way to watch it from... My time frame, WCW, WWF, ECW at 3 in the morning. Oh, yeah, I remember that. The days when you could be impolitically correct with the violence on TV that right. late of a time slot. Right. I mean, where I lived, it's 30 minutes away from the Golden Globe Stadium that they filmed out of. Oh, wow. I've, my, the old store I used to work at, I could walk in and run into a wrestler if I wasn't careful. Yeah, talk and, about that. Because, I mean, even when you were a bouncer, you were running into him, correct? Yeah, I've got the different clubs. I've run into... Come on, rain's failing me. Mike Jones, better known as Virgil and Vincent of the NWO, used to come into my store every day. Nice. Uh, Shane Douglas uh, was talking. I was at church one time with my ex. She had her nephew who was crying. Guy asks if he's all right. Turn around and it's Kurt Angle. Goes to the same church as my ex. Oh, wow. It's just, I mean, ever I lived that before coming down to Florida, I was 30 minutes outside of Pittsburgh. So there was a wrestler, a football player. Uh, the thing Jason would have loved was Lemieux came down to a bar and rented it out just because they liked the wings from the Penguins. That's how far back. Oh, wow. I, I got lucky sometimes. Got to see movies being filmed on highways with rig cars going up the same way I went to work. Did you see one of the Batman movies being filmed? When you went back home last time? I didn't get to see the Batman movie. It was That was being filmed after I got back. That was the one with Tom Hardy as Bane. Is that Dark Knight Rises? Yeah. Yeah. No, the last thing that my mother hated because she was a visiting nurse at the time and it kept her up was the movie Super 8. Yeah, that was the one I was thinking of. Yeah. Yeah, I remember you telling me about Super 8. Yeah. Saw that one. So, everywhere on Super 8, like the kid rides his bike past the apartments, I've walked past those apartments. The cemetery he was in, that's actually the same cemetery where my dad is buried. Everything in that movie i've probably been in my stomping grounds in my hometown at some point oh wow and like the one scene with the giant tank my buddy got ticked off he was trying to sleep and they were rolling that right past his house 
<laughs> the only thing, the only reason my mom got mad is they had those bright movie lights, and she got to be up like at six in the morning to go to work. So where those apartments were, where the kid rode his bike, I could walk down two streets and be home. So that was not only in my hometown, that was literally filmed in my neighborhood. I, I don't quite remember, but I think there was like a big name director doing that movie. Who was that? I that, know, uh, but I can't think of it. No, Is that like, another Abrams movie? Yeah, I want to say that that might have been Abrams. Yeah, I want to say it was J.J. Abrams between all the other stuff he was doing. That does sound right. Sorry about that. Hello? Oh, I'm here. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I got my I had a cord get tangled up and I just about dragged my tower to the floor. But anyway, um so so James, you've been watching like so the like the mate. So do you have any memories of like the independence? I know you're younger than me a little bit, but not really the independence, but then again, where I was at it might not have got shown being in what like the northern tip of West Virginia. So right, wow. Um, okay, so Phil. Yeah. Uh, what is your what is your earliest memories? What were you watching? Um, for the longest time, nothing but WWF. Yeah. Like I I didn't know about Independence. I didn't know about other promotions. Not until like later on when uh, when uh, like uh, Rumco Toys were doing uh, like AWA figures of like yeah. Ric Flair and mm -hmm. and the Road Warriors. I remember seeing those as a kid, but um, and I was like, you know, what's this? That there's. there's wannabe wrestlers that are trying to be WWF, you know, that's that's kind of how I saw it at, at first. Oh, wow. Um, no. Uh, I didn't read a whole lot of the, the magazine, so I didn't know about uh, many other wrestlers, but and I, I was always confused about how wrestlers had, like, were supposedly popular coming in when I had never seen them before. Like Dusty Rhodes. Um, it, 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 it didn't really click with me until a lot later. Um, yeah, so when, when the whole, when, when Hulkamania was getting kind of boring and old and it, it didn't seem like th that when I was getting older too, and it didn't seem that fun, then I was, I, I always felt like it was that's just for kids now. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm i not going to continue to watch it. Right. Uh, it, so, it, like, until the, the mid-90s, started seeing the NWO logo, you know, pop up everywhere. You know, people are wearing it on hats and, and shirts. I'm like, okay, what is this? And then my younger brother, I was... Oh, I was, yeah. I was in um, Minnesota for, like... Um, some after high school classes and stuff like that. Um, so when I came back to to Wisconsin, my younger brother was was getting deep into it. He was watching both WCW and WWF. I'm like, okay, I'll sit down and watch, you know, and see what this is all about. Mm -hmm. And the whole NWO angle with them and Sting, with them nice. pretty much taking over the company. And and that 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 drew me in. It was that storyline that really uh, it, it didn't like speak to me, but 
it was it, it got me fascinated in the in the whole business and right stuff like that. That was a fun time to watch. Like oh, yeah. even before Sting became that thing, like what he is now, like just the the lead up into the NWL was just entertaining. Uh, it was it was a new take on it, kind of a thing. Mm-hmm. And and seeing the way that WWF changed about yeah. being, you know, what it what it continued to be was right. uh, almost like a kid show to me. Right. You know, they 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 really went for, you know, the 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 frat boy, um, right. uh, mentality, and yeah. that's kind of kind of what I was back then too. So, yeah, all that stuff was a lot of fun. Right. Enjoyed that for a long time. And when the that when WCW uh, went under and was bought, and right. when they kind of ran through everything with uh with uh Stone Cold and Rock and yeah and Rock not wrestling anymore that was that was the kind of time where I took a, a another time off right so I I didn't really watch a whole lot of TNA and stuff like that but uh yeah I since the the start of AEW I've really gotten back into it yeah um yeah it's just one of those things where you know we you know we have this vast watching experience i just think you guys i mean well not so much i mean ecw kind of gave you a taste of it but like to be able to watch like different territories and stuff like that was really fun to watch because you didn't see the same people and then maybe a year later somebody had had to go because their contract was up and they had to go somewhere else um into work and it was really I, I thought it was kind of fun to watch i mean even 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 glow was was funny to watch <laughs> you know because well because if you figure there was a time when like women wrestlers were considered a novelty thing there wasn't supposed to be a women's championship title it wasn't supposed to be or even in mma like it, women don't fight you know, women, you know, women wrestled because it was a novelty and, you know, it gave, you know, the guys somebody, something to watch, you know, you like eye candy. And then you had other, or they were manager, valets, managers, like even was it Ric Flair's like fiance, girlfriend, wife now, Fifi, or she was Fifi. If you guys remember that. So briefly, he had like this French maid that walked out with him, <laughs> and it was her. And uh, no kidding, like it was they, they did like they just yeah, I don't know how that came to be. Uh, Flair has talked about it in interviews and stuff like that, but that's how he met her, and she wanted like help and save his life. Um, you know, I remember watching my first ECW thing was Taz. The thing that made me take notice was Taz. Taz the match with Taz and Shane Douglas. And that first bit of that match is just straight out amateur wrestling. Oh, wow. They did that. James, do you have you ever seen it? No. I haven't seen it. Sorry. Yeah. I don't think I've seen it. It was, and it was one of those things where ECW was kind of like, like you didn't, like I stumbled on it. I don't, I did, wasn't, I'd heard of it. Or I've heard of the company. I just, I stumbled on it. I figured out what channel it was on locally uh, where, where we live. Phil. And it was straight out amateur wrestling, and then of course, like somebody's got to pull the the you know the the you know the move the, the heel move, and then take it into like you know the entertainment aspect of it. But it was sheer just amateur wrestling. Um, and if I remember correctly, you amateur wrestled, didn't you, in high school, James? Junior high, high school. High school. Was it because of professional wrestling, or was it something to do? It was something to do because, of course, the amateur wrestling is nothing like professional. And no. somehow my mother thought it was safer to be a wrestler than a football player with pads. Well, she doesn't know. Oh, well, no, she didn't know. Oh. But um, first, what? first match I ever had, I got picked straight up and slammed into the gym floor. Oh, yeah. 
turned out the guy I first faced in my first match ever was like a sixth or seventh generation amateur wrestler in his family. I had no chance going out there. Right, yeah. Yeah. Um, I know I had to learn in when I was in, in gym class, we the teacher that at Brookwood, I don't remember what year it was, I think it was eighth grade year, he did a wrestling uh unit where we had to learn the weight classes, we had to learn how to tie up the you know, moves and stuff like that. Then you took a, a written test and then the other one was you did like a tournament style. Like not a tournament, but you just you you were paired up with somebody based upon your weight. You know, we had a way in. I was the unfortunate one. I was in between two guys. I was in between a a kid that was lighter than me, but he was a, 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 a he worked he was a farm kid. And then I was in, and then the guy that I was lighter than, but he was heavier than me, was just he was severely overweight. And I had to wrestle the one guy first, the 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 guy that was that was lighter than me, and he I didn't have a chance. I had Matt Burns so bad, and I was so exhausted. I I could f- easily fall asleep on the mat. I was just, because it just took it like you know because you're trying to defend and get out of, you know if you know you were I don't know what, what is it the one where you're you're on the ground. James, the like the it, like where you're on the ground on all fours, and the guys like on your side trying to take you down. Yeah, I'm trying to think. It's been so long. It sounds so wrong, but that's I don't mean it in that context. It was brutal. So, but when I went when I wrestled the other guy, he didn't have like he just he wasn't athletic at all, and I just I just I knew if I could get him to the mat, I I, I had him, and I was able to do so. But it's hard. And you see those like division one matches like Brock had or you know the the Olympic match that Kurt Angle had, those are brutal. Uh-huh. But yeah, so it was an interesting match. I mean, uh one day I'll we'll have to do like a uh like a like a reaction video about that match between Taz and Shane Douglas. It was really I remember being really good. Um so what are your favorite matches that you've seen over the years? My favorite matches? Uh, any type of match? It doesn't matter. Pay-per-view, televised. I mean, it, it was scary. Anyone that's watched it knows it was, but it did turn out being one of the ones that sticks with me is that Hell in the Cell with Taker and Mankind. That one is, it, it, is it, that one's one to watch. I think that's on anybody, but anybody's list is that Hell in a Cell match because he got destroyed. <laughs> Yeah, like he was kind of somewhat okay when he went through the, when he went through and he landed on the mat, but then when he went through that table, like it really it screwed him up even worse. It did. Plus all the stuff that people didn't know about that match. Like, if I remember right, Re- Taker was actually wrestling with a broken foot that night. Oh, really? I don't even think I ever knew that. Like, they were both busted up going into that match. Right. Uh, I can picture the match I'm thinking of, but I can't remember who was in it. It was a SummerSlam. I want to say it was Flair and somebody, but this was so long ago, I think Henning was outside the ring on Flair's side. That could have been, yeah. I mean, I'll let you think, James. Phil. Um, I can't help but think like what stuff that really got me into wrestling 
Like, I, I remember seeing some wrestling shows, but nothing that I really remembered until WrestleMania 3. Oh, wow. Um, so when I watched WrestleMania 3, I, I remember watching it from start to finish. On videotape, mind you. Yeah, on videotape. Um, uh, the, the only two that I really remember that stuck out was of course the main event, Hogan and Andre. Yeah. That that's what everyone came to see. Right. But I I remember uh the the steamboat and Ooh. and Randy Savage match. Yeah. People still talk about it like that's a good that, match that's, too. That that changed the landscape of wrestling too. And I remember like how how back and forth it was and how athletic they those guys were and like how it was not a normal match. Right. Um another match that I can't help but feel like really got me into a lot of like high flying luchador stuff was Rey Mysterio Jr. and Psychosis. And I don't remember if it was like a pay per view that I saw, but yeah, I don't remember. I, I remember the name. Was he another mask guy? Yeah, he was a mask guy. He had a really weird mask where it was like a, he had like horns that came out of the side of his head. It's uh, kind of reminiscent of uh, Jushin Thunder Ligers. Yeah. Okay. Um. No, the, the the way they did things, like, uh, yeah, I remember them now. The I the just, falls yeah. that they took outside, you know, mm -hmm. outside of the ring, and they were jumping off the top ropes and doing like Frankenstein'ers on each other. It, like the, that, I I saw that as next level stuff. Right. And you know, a lot of that is still you know holding true today. It seems to be like. From what I remember, you you, you rem I remember wrestling, and then I remember when it like, and then you had guys like um, Snuka who did the uh, stuff off the top rope, the splashes and stuff like that. Or not too many people were doing anything outside of that, like elbows coming off or up off the top or whatever. But it seemed to be there. There was like a change where a lot of guys were doing a lot of kind of acrobatic stuff coming off the top rope or even in within the ring or those ones where they'll they'll, they'll run, grab the, the top and the middle rope, and then kind of spin around to yeah. hit somebody. It, there seemed to be that there was a change. And that's like it was more of um, the luchador style. And I hadn't really seen any luchador stuff up until that point, but a lot of the American guys were doing it. Some of the American guys started picking up on it. Yep. Um, also, too, like for like for you know for those guys that are not our in our age range, we used to have to wait if we didn't pay, we weren't able to afford the pay per views, like for WrestleMania or some of the WCW stuff. We had you we had to wait until. So it'd be the next broadcast is when they would go over the highlights to watch the matches. We had to wait until it was released on, on videotape. And that was up to at least a year or two before we saw those matches. Uh -huh. I mean, we, we waited with like heavy anticipation, like to see it when we knew they were being released or whatever. You went to the video store and rented it. Um. Yeah, they didn't do a whole lot of recaps back then either. No, no. It, it no, was like no. as soon as it's done, it's done. Move on to the next. Right. Yeah. You know. Um, some of mine. The Taz Shane Douglas one out of ECW is one of them. Uh, the Helena Cell is another one. I have vague remember remembrances of watching maybe Sabu and Rob Van Dam go at it in ECW. And those really, really great, like high, like just dangerous matches. Um, I remember watching Mick Foley when he was not Mankind. He was Cactus Jack. 
in WC, WCCW. That's going really back. Like, they, so much so, because he was from New York, he wasn't allowed to talk. Because he couldn't do a southern accent because he was, he was supposedly out of truth or consequences in New Mexico and he didn't have that accent at all. They wouldn't allow him to talk. <laughs> and nobody, I don't know if people, many people realize that. Uh, well, there's, he couldn't do an accent, but also the original character was Cactus Jack Manson. Oh, really? I didn't know that. that yeah, th that I didn't know. Which, as we all know with Manson, he didn't say much regardless. Right. Um, man. Like Snuka and Steamboat, I remember seeing. Um, Bret Hart. That match that he did with um, Dave, not was it Davy Boy? Or was no, yeah, it was Davy Boy. And England was, yeah, that one was a good match. But then when I heard what happened before and during the match, like ha Bret Hart I, is one of my favorite wrestlers of all time, but Bret had to carry that match. I don't know if you guys had heard the story. I I don't think so. James? I probably have, but it's probably been so long I forgot it. As something to do with I don't know if he had a, if he had one too many uh in a night before or he he was on pain meds or something. I don't remember the specific circumstances, but he couldn't remember like as he couldn't remember the spots, he couldn't remember what to do when. And Brett, as they were doing the match, had to call the match to him. And at the end, they were supposed to have done what eventually happened when they were supposed to give each other a hug or whatever it was. Brett had to get his attention and get him to do it. Like, Brett carried that whole match. The tag matches with... Um, the... Uh, the Rockers with Marty Jannetty and Shawn Michaels were, I, I can't, I don't remember specifically who, but all those matches because they did that style that we were talking about, that real high flying kind of luchador stuff. That was really fun to watch. Um, matter of fact, I think one, one year for Halloween, I dressed up as Marty Jannetty in a role, a, a bad Marty Jannetty, by the way, <laughs> with the bandanas and stuff like that. Um, I, for some reason, have a memory of watching when the Sh when Hogan beat the Sheik. I remember that. I don't know, but for some reason, I have it tied to daytime TV. And if I remember correctly, like Hogan got out of the camel clutch. Yeah, the ironic part, me mentioning the babysitters earlier, that's right. the one week they were watching. Right. I like I remember watching that and it was a big deal because like Hogan, you know, he was posed to be like, you know, the next guy and Sheik was the guy and it, it was I don't remember anything other than the camel clutch. That's the only thing I remember out of that whole match. Um Oh man. The Starcades, um the wars with again with the four horsemen that have been had over the years, many iterations of the four horsemen. Exactly, um, watching when Sting were in one of those versions. Yeah, right. Um, I remember before Rick and Scott Steiner um, became their own thing, they were with Kevin Sullivan. Uh huh. Uh, the Varsity Club. And I think Rotunda was in it. I could be reaching on that one. Not sure. I, I thought Mike Rotunda was in it, but it could be. You mentioned Starcade, but growing up, I remember watching WCW's War Games where they put the rings right. together. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was always a, a big event, too. Um, you know, just... I mean, a lot of matches I've watched... I mean, that, I, that I've watched... Um, the Rock and Roll Express versus the Midnight Express. If everybody, if anybody knows what that is, 
Yep. When Jim Cornette wielded that racket like a freaking sword. <laughs> Anytime anybody came near him, they got to bust it right on their head. I remember him using that in WWF, opening it up, and it was a horseshoe on a post. Yep. Man. Um, yeah, I can't, like, for some reason, matches are kind of, like, um, some of the matches I saw with Jericho in the independent scene was just, where they were great. Like, he would climb these ridiculously high things and just come right off of them. And I say the first time I ever saw Jericho wrestle wrestle by his actions in that first match, I saw him in WCW. I had respect for him. Right. Because if you guys remember, he was against Das Wonderkind. Oh Alex yeah. <laughs> yeah. And That's Alex right. Raven was- <laughs> he messed up and caught the guardrail and actually hurt himself. And Jericho's like, no, and stopped the match. Right. Yeah, he's a good dude. Um, I I can't for some reason recall like specific matches with Jericho. One of my favorite po- promos is when him and The Rock are going at it. And in the promo, they're both using each other's catchphrases. Mm-hmm. You know, because they both they were both just both those guys, and it was just comical. Like I don't know who thought of it. I don't, I've never heard it discussed, but I remember it was a promo, and they both were using each other's catchphrases. It was it was magic. Um, I'm trying to think if that was during the tournament for the undisputed title. That may have been. I can't remember. I, I like it's been that's been so long ago. Um, that's another thing he can say. He's the first ever. Right. Yeah. Well, he did that a couple times. In a couple different avenues, he's done that. Um, you know, and it, it doesn't get discussed a lot, it, even though it is. The first Hell in a Cell match is kind of interesting to watch. Uh-huh. But that second one just eclipses it so much. You're talking about the first one, which should have been Shawn Michaels versus Undertaker in the appearance of Kane. It was yeah. the very first one. Yeah, that was the first one. Oh, God, that must be Kane. <clears throat> so who are your favorite announcers before we go to favorite wrestlers? Who are your favorite announcers growing up? It's For me, it's split. It's got to be Jim Ross and Tony Schiavone. Yeah. Lawler's up there, too, though. Yeah, Lawler is up there, too, yeah. Phil? I want to say the stuff that came out of Bobby Heenan's mouth. <laughs> As just, a manager? Just <laughs> calling, it was just making fun of He was too, yeah. And, and like, but he would, he would, he wouldn't try to say it like, like he was trying to be funny, but he like, like he was just absolutely serious. <laughs> and believed what he was saying. Of of course, it, he was just playing the character, but I mean, calling people humanoids and and humanoids. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. It, just him and Gorilla Monsoon. You know, right? Gorilla playing like the total right straight you man, know, uh, good guy and everything. But right. No, nah, yeah. I think I think Bobby almost. He he was great. I forget about Bobby Heenan. How about Jesse Ventura as a uh, commentator? Yeah. He was a lot of fun, too. The way he acted, it brought New Meaning to color commentator because he was just so over the top. It's just, oh, yeah. But it was the kind of that age, too. Um, I liked um, Taz does great commentary. Even when he's in the WWE, he did some really good stuff. Um, I like his stuff that he's doing in AEW, but I, the, the guy on the end who speaks, who's from England or whatever, he's really hard to understand. Yeah. I don't remember what his name is, but. Anthony something. Anthony something. 
but you know, but it's just so funny because you we you know we have all the you know we have all these wrestlers that have wrestled over the over the the decades, but we forget about the commentators. Because you figure some of the first stuff that I heard was maybe Monsoon. There was another guy too, another English guy that was a commentator, and I can't remember what his name was. And he used to Lord be Lord Alfred Hayes. Yes. It, and we forget about them being characters that help tell those stories. You know the pro, the promos, the um, you know the calling of the match to make it, you know, to kind of give it that the the gravitas, you know, of the weight that's going on. Um, yeah, it, story of how they got there. Right, yeah. Or if they showed up, hey, this guy, blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, um, I know Shivani kind of did that at a time. There was another guy that, that worked with Shivani in WCW. That his name is Escapes Me, but he had curly, like, black hair. Oh. And I don't remember what his name was. He, I liked him, too. It's there, and I can't place it. I know, right? I remember Mike Tanay. That's who I'm talking about. Oh. I think that's who I'm talking about, yeah. He was I remember more of like a, Huh? Phil? He was more of like a play by play. Yeah. Or or you know, he was he was calling like the technical stuff and Right. Okay. I also want to say Tanay was a really big fan. He always loved calling uh, Mongo McMichael's matches. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. Um, uh, how about your favorite wrestlers? That is a long list. Alright, you know what? We'll save that for a show. How about wrestlers that you don't like? I've become not a fan of the Ultimate Warrior anymore. I liked him when I was younger, but the stuff that I've heard. And then when you watch it now, he's so one side. He's a one trick pony. Yeah. They always said he was out of his mind for real. Right. I hate to say that. He was he was great to I mean he had a look to him, but I just I mean, may he rest in peace too. Yeah, that it was kind of a sad day. He comes back to Raw, and then two days later, he's gone. He is gone. See, I don't, I don't have wrestlers that I really hate. Right. For me, it's more: can we quit putting the titles on these guys? Can we give somebody else a chance? Okay. So it kind give, of makes you hate one. them by force. Give, give me give 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 me an example. I mean, how many times has Randy Orton had a title put on him just to get the Flair's run of fifteen or sixteen? Okay, that's fair. Born into the family, he right. would start business, not the family. Right. Those stories about him being backstage, knee high to Ric Flair, it's true. He was there. Right. It's, Right. Uh, senior and junior's son and grandson. Right. Phil? Mm, yeah, those are good good picks. Um, I, I, I would really like to see Goldberg just kind of be done. Thank you. Eh. I was going to say Goldberg, too. I, it was something to watch, to be fair. It was something to watch. It, it, it was a good spectacle. But, but it was a run trick. Like even Bischoff said that like it was he was just a one trick pony. Like he could only do so many things. He would hurt you in the process of wrestling you. Yeah. He he was a football player turned wrestler. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, I they I don't think they did him any favors by how they rolled him out in WCW. They made him a mark, and they didn't do him any favors. He'd have these real brief matches, and getting into however many wins he got before he took a loss. He, you know, he got a championship out of it. 
but then they were he was done within a year you figure his he was done they couldn't do anything with him anymore they couldn't you know not so much they couldn't do anything anymore but he was just what are you going to do with him he just spears somebody or you know or throws him across the ring and it, it, it was fun though just it watching was. this guy just totally manhandle people well who would you rather watch now sting or goldberg out of that pick sting yeah it's, it's always going to be sting because sting had that relationship with the fans yeah you know what i'm saying like he worked like you know he he you know we you know he was he just he was a better fit with you know he has a longer rapport with the fans and then here's goldberg Get in the ring, get the job done, go home and get paid. Right. Whether it was ever meant to be that way, that's how they pulled him out. Like, do you know, um, have you heard the story, not to massively pick on the guy, did you hear the story of the match between him and and Paige and how Paige had to freaking tell tell him how to miss a spear? No. So it gets brought up, like they have a match together, and Paige brings it up. To miss, to like to the prospect of him missing a spear because he's never missed. He's like, "How do you miss a spear?" And Paige had to come up with scenarios for him to miss it. And I think it was the Halloween Havoc, whatever year that they wrestled, and he had to he had to tell him how to do that. I'm not necessarily, I don't want to pick on him. He, I mean, like I said, like we said before, the beginning part of his run was, was kind of fun to watch. I'd never seen anything like that, but then he, there was nothing, there was nothing there after that. It was just nothing. So he wrestles now. Nobody really wants to really watch it, but when Sting wants to wrestle or take a bump, everybody's watching. Well, see, that's the thing, Jason. What you haven't seen is Goldberg just wrestled. I know. That's why I bring it up because Bischoff in an interview was asked about staying in Goldberg and he's just like the way Goldberg came out. Yeah, it was fun. But then, you know, what else, you know, he just did what he did and that was it. There is then it's not much. And, you know, he, he hurt people. I mean, Bret Hart's been very vocal about it. Oh, yeah. He's the one that gave him like a concussion. Right. Um, never really recovered from, I guess. Well, I mean, he had that stroke too that doesn't help him either. I don't know what year that was, but um, I do. That stroke that Brett had, at least the first one, right? Because it was rumored he had a second one, was on the next year's anniversary of Owen's passing while he was riding his motorcycle in Canada. Oh, really? Oh, wow. To um, the day. Oh wow. Um anybody think of Yeah. You met Brett? Yeah. You son of a gun. <laughs> now Jason's jealous. Yeah. I like Brett was uh, Brett was one of my guys. Him and the Heart Foundation before Owen. When it was just him and, and uh Jim Neinhardt. Met Jim too. I know you met Jake the Saint too. I like Jake too, which is kind of strange, but I re- like I I heard the promo he did where he just whispered. Have you ever heard that one? I kind of remember it. It was great. It like it, it's I'd have to find that one, but he just kind of whispered everything. He was real kind of quiet. He's talking just like this and this real serious shit though. And it was just like he and he just left. He just walked out of the uh, out of the area. <laughs> It was it was great too. Um, anybody else with guys that you don't like or don't care for? I'm gonna say John Cena, and I don't know what happened between him and him and freaking Brock for Brock to kind of come out of nowhere and beat the hell out of him like he did. Go, Phil. I, I mean Cena's. I don't know. Cena's fine to me. Uh, may have gotten a bad rap as being, you know, 
just being, you know, the, the next guy to appeal to the kids. Mm-hmm. Um, but who I can't stand is JBL. You I don't wanna... like him. Who is that? Um, so he was uh, Bradshaw. Bradshaw. Uh, he used to be part of the Acolytes, him and Farouk. Okay. The APA. Bradshaw. Before and he then he drinking. went... He went to this uh um Bradshaw was guy. did Bradshaw like wrestle with like dark hair and a mustache? Yeah. Okay. I might remember who he is. And then when he went with the JBL gimmick, he became the 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 rich Texan um oh, yeah. wearing a cowboy hat and, and a suit and everything. Just right. totally different from Right what he was and, and then i i guess he developed some like i mean i'm sure he was pretty well deep in the company but i think i don't know he he developed like kind of like this bullish attitude okay uh with guys in the locker room and stuff like that so i right. i kind of from what i heard i just really don't like him okay kind of like an elitist attitude yep yep that's like right up there with uh, MJF. I didn't know who the heck that was either until I saw him wrestle and they broke down what his name was on AEW. Which is even more fun to know that Brad or Goldberg threw him against the wall in one of his entrances. Damn. He played one of the security guards that Goldberg yeah. slammed. Yeah, you told me that, yeah. Um so does anybody know why Brock went off at Cena like that? Was it Cena that he came out and just beat the hell out of for like no reason? Was that a, a was that a work or was that like did he piss him off that bad? I want to say it was a blend of both because I think it started as a work and then just Brock got into it because Cena kept being Cena. Yeah, right. Um okay. I guess, uh, or, Phil, do you want to add anybody to the list so we can move on to the AEW stuff? Um, no, I don't think so. Okay. Who, who I want to know, I want to ask you something, though. Or right. both of you guys. Okay. Who Who is a favorite that's kind of, not all-time favorite, but more like a, a current favorite right now? Better question, male or female, it doesn't matter. It don't matter. No. I, actually, give me one one of each. One female, one male. I like black charus. Okay. I knew that was coming out of you. He, I, like, I like Jericho. He's on there. Cody, Dustin. But that guy, I think he has a lot of potential. And I wanted to see him in AEW. I really want to see him in AEW. I think they can utilize him like you wouldn't believe. Or not only that, but I think if they bring in um, the decay idea, that might be really good too. But I don't know how that would work out with the um, with the factions and stuff like that. I don't know. I because the Dark Order isn't like the Dark Order like it used to be because of Brody passing. So, but Black Tarus is is mine hands down from what i've seen that guy do i think he's got a lot of potential and there's and he can do something what about female um the only one that i'm really the, the only two there's only two that i'm aware of Britt baker and anna anna j anna j I've never seen either one of them wrestle. I may have seen clips of Britt. I haven't seen Anna wrestle. Anna is local to us in a in a really weird way. Right. She's from Brunswick. She I don't know. I, I don't feel she's top tier yet. No, but she's she's getting there. She's, she's learning fast, right? Um, 
The you know what I'm gonna have to give it to Anna J because of the 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 interview I heard on um, Jericho's podcast. She's somebody who's young. She's an up and comer. She's got limited experience, but she just wants to. She just wants to get in it. And I have a lot of respect for that. And I don't know anybody else. Tay by con by by conversation, but I haven't seen her wrestle either. Those are my choices. Cool. How about you, James? Currently, what's your favorite get? Who's your favorite guy? Who's your favorite girl? Currently, right now, the favorite guy. There's just something about him. He's, he is the workhorse, like they say. His has to be Adam Page. Yes, I I I could hear it in your voice. That knew that was gonna come. WWE, because, I guess. No, no, no. WWE. WWE. Really? He was he Kenny with? Omega's tag team partner. He was a tag champion for the last year with Kenny. Did he just do re something recently? He had Tony, a match. Tony has been trying to get Go him back. in. Like a, uh, like a week or two ago, they had a match? Uh, Maybe? He teamed up with them. I'm going to I'm gonna have to freaking check him out. The the latest match, it was him tagging with Big Money Matt. Okay. Which is Hardy. Right. Which, you're going to love that one when you watch it, because Hardy tried to swindle him that if he lost to Hardy, he got Adam Page's first quarter wages. Oh, wow. Yeah, but Adam Page's answer was, somebody once told me, always bring a second uh, set of papers. So Matt signed that if Page won, he got a quarter of Matt's. Oh, wow. So they shook hands in the rings, and their wages each are on the line to whoever wins. Right. All right, Phil, it's your turn. Um, oh, yeah. Does James have a good uh, female? Oh, with? James, you're female. I'm sorry. Okay, phrasing, because that just sounded wrong. Listen. It's a tie between two. One for skill and one because of the storyline. Right now, one of my favorites in AEW has to be Thunder Rosa. Skill. Absolute skill. Not, not only does she have the skill, but do you know who she was before, Phil? Um, she was an NWA champion. She was also in Lucha Underground. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That is... Thunder Rosa was Cobra Moon. What? Yeah. Thunder Rosa was Cobra Moon, and for the longest time with the Lucha Underground, some of them had stipulations they could not take their mask off for a certain period of time afterward. Kind of like WWE's no compete clause. Yeah. And of course, we're going to go back to the Fiend for the tie because I'm liking how they took this. I can always win. I'm the goddess. You can, I can do no wrong. It twisted her into this dark entity. Yeah. Because yeah. that is showing her range of um, entertainment, her range of skill. It, and it's, it, nice. it's definitely given her something more to do. Yeah. And I it's like nice. That. Sorry, I keep interrupting you. But no, after I all, you. go ahead. But after all. The concussions that happened after that whole Rousey stint. It's good to see her back in the ring, even if it's for short matches. Well, wow. Yeah. No, that, that's what keeps people watching. Right. Um, um, let me see here. Um... Favorite guy right now, like like you've heard me say, 
Like I like a lot of the high flyers and the 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 spectacles and the you know just the stuff that catches your eye. Um, I I can't choose between. Um, Darby Allen Ooh. or Ray Phoenix right now. See, the way you were talking, I was thinking Ray Phoenix was going to be one. Ray the, Phoenix, uh, coincidentally, has been a tag part into Black Taurus. Mm-hmm. Oh. Uh, this last match that I saw, um, it was the main event of last Wednesday. Uh, Ray was doing a stint, hitting everybody in the opposition in the in that six man tag, and the stuff that he was pulling off was crazy. Yeah, uh, he he would have a guy sitting on the top rope, and he would get on the springboard off the top rope and do like a spinning roundhouse kick on the, to the guy on the top rope, Damn. and then just get back up and do it again. Right, you know, grab Eddie Kingston by the hand and then do a an arm drag on him, and then right flip outside and hit somebody else, and then come back in and hit another guy. I mean, right, it he he comboed those that stuff really good. But right. Darby Allen, he's, there's something he's about to it. Like too. His his speed, yes. Um, he, you you he is such an underdog. He is. He looks uh, like the underdog. And he'll take crazy bumps. Yep. Crazy bumps. Right. Uh, like stuff that nobody should ever take if they want a long career. Right. But he, he does it. Right. And that, you don't see that anywhere else. You just right. don't. You don't. Um, He's fun to watch, too. But I, I always see that's him why in... you don't see him wrestle a whole lot right, right now right. because he needs to recoup time. Yep, and can't do that all the time. Yeah. Well, well um, let me ask you this. Let me ask you guys this. Do you think that like when Darby, like, because I, I maybe you've only seen, I know one for sure, and but like, uh, I may have seen him in another one. Do you think that like when he does it, it looks like it's a war? Like when he goes in there, like he, it's a war. It's not like, like a, a three or five minute match. Like when he's in there, he's in there for a while, and it's a war. Like it's not a wrestling match. Like it's just a fight. You know what I'm saying? Like he's fighting for his life. I mean, he does the wrestling moves and stuff like that, but he looks like he's having a war. Uh, he looks like the smallest dog trying to survive in the yard with the biggest ones. Right. Yeah. Yeah, he's, Brian Cage in the title match says it all. Oh, Jesus. That guy's huge. TV doesn't do him justice. I've met no, Cage dude. in person once. He looks huge. Matter of fact. Hey, Phil. Yeah. Was that you that I sent that independent match with Cage and, uh, and Steiner? Steiner? Yeah. Did I send that to you? Yeah, you sent that to me. That was fun. That was about the funniest match I have ever seen in my life. It was Steiner and Cage and... Uh, Orange Cassidy and Joey Orange Ryan. Ca I don't know if Joey I could Ryan, discuss... Joey Ryan, oh my gosh. If I, I don't know if I could say what that one guy did. What, like, I don't know how you could do that with a straight face. <laughs> with the, the stuff that he was doing. We'll have to talk about that off camera. Because I don't know if I want to mention, like, what he did in that match. It was yeah. comical. It was sheer it comedy. And then but then they would come against like Cage and Steiner. And Steiner, while he kind of looked like he missed a couple he's he's kind of like mystic he missed a couple steps. He's still good. But Cage just grabbed hold of somebody and just like forget it. He's so big. Yep. He'll power bomb you and then pick you straight up, deadlift yep. you and power bomb you again. Right, yeah. Um I like Cage's, that Cage, I like Cassidy's, like, act of defiance. Yeah. And it's hard to get used to, 
because I've never seen a guy go in the ring and just shove his his hands in his pockets and just do these crazy things. Or have it where he reaches up in the air thinking he's going to be cute and some guy just grabs a hold of him and just flips him. Yeah, the independent circuit was worse. He used to do that stuff with a beer in his hand. No. <laughs> Man. Oh, that's Man. Um, so what do you guys think of the women's tournament right now? Um... I think, uh, well, I, I, I just watched uh, the Japanese girls on YouTube. Right. Uh, that was pretty good. Um, but I don't really know a whole lot of about them. Right. So uh, what I saw was okay. Right. Uh, I did really enjoy uh, Serena Deeb and uh, Rio uh, mm-hmm. on this last uh, dynamite that was a good match and it was a good storytelling too and rio uh, won that one correct what's that rio won that one correct yep. okay yep. um i thought it, i i enjoyed it right. they, they both look solid and like they know what they're doing so right um, james what do you think well out of the japanese side i know aja kong okay She's she's a veteran. She's yeah. a veteran, but she reminds me of uh, I can't think of her name. Was it Bull Nakamura? Oh, yeah. And that one had a stint, like a real short stint in WWF, and that's her fighting style reminds me of her. Oh wow! Just pommel and overpower yeah but this one seems to have more technical skill in it too like more uh if i remember right more submission holds added in right okay yeah i remember her um i think she was in wcw for a little bit too the other one from the japanese side we've seen her Saka, trying to say the names is a pain. Saka to me. <laughs> no. If you've been watching since AEW, you know who I'm talking about, Phil. She looks like she dresses almost like a genie. Has big earrings, like oh yeah, the magical girl one, yeah. Um, and if you remember, that's the one. I'm pretty sure Brit. Baker stomped her teeth in on the ropes. Ooh. I think so. Uh, yeah. It, it's 2020 has been a long year. And, right. It's hard uh, to remember. Yeah. Uh, what? Trying to remember I, how things were when crowds were around. It's, it's, it's kind of tough. James, what title does uh, Deeb hold? That's the NWA title. Okay, I wasn't sure. I knew she held a title. I just wasn't sure which one it was. That's the National Wrestling Alliance. Alliance. Yeah. Um, So who are we picking to win? I mean, I know I can't speak for the uh, Japanese side because I don't know anybody. I hardly know anybody in the American one, but a a couple. Hmm. I'll go first because I, I already know what it is. I would like to see Anna Jay try to make it into the um, semifinals and Britt Baker because it feels like Britt Baker is getting the huge push. I don't see Anna taking the title or being a finalist because she's just too, she doesn't have enough, she doesn't have, en- she has, she's not enough yet. She's still got a lot of work to do. But I think Britt Baker's going to be the finalist on the American side if she hasn't been taken out already. See, that might be a hard one, especially the wars they have if somehow Britt and Thunder Rosa get stuck together because that's going to be an ever-loving war. Well, that could be war that's going to go, too. 
as like into the uh, the the quarterfinals. No. I think it would be interesting if if Anna wrestled um, Tay Conte. Yeah. Because they're tag partners. So I, I mean, I think that would be interesting anyway. Um, not that either one of them would go anywhere. Or tag partners or best friends outside the ring. Right, yeah. Then again, we've seen some matches over the years. Some of the best friends have beat the living snot out of each oh, yeah. other. Oh, yeah. For work, yeah. And yep. then after the match, they shake hands and walk away together. Right. Phil, where's your pick on the American side? I like where Thunder Rose is going. Okay. I think I think uh I think if anybody can match well against the Japanese side, she can. Okay. I think some other guys or some of the other girls are going to be maybe not as experienced or could could ha- you know have a match with each other. Right. So I mean I'd love to see Anna J, you know, move on because I I'd love seeing her on TV, but I I don't see that happening. I uh, my pick is Thunder Rosa to win the American side. Wow. A- and go to uh face Sheeta for the title. Okay. Who are you picking out of the two of them to get the title? Rosa. If you think it's going to be the American side to bring it home? To, to Shida, I think Shida is going to lose the title to, to oh. Thunder Rosa. James? I mean, if Rosa gets to Shida the way she's been trained and everything, one mistake. That's all it's going to take for Rosa to hit her. Uh, what is it? She does a. Is she the one that does the version of the Death Valley Driver, or did she change it again? Um, she has some no, kind of drop. Her, her her last thing is like a like a kick, like uh like Nakamura. Okay. Um. Okay. What do we think about the Sammy Guevara news? I think. Yeah. Jeez, I don't know. I would like to see him on Impact, honestly. Okay. To continue that, like, you know, that breakup from... The, the circle, uh, inner, inner circle. circle, yeah. Or James. Sammy's just going to continue to sabotage MJF or something. Give it right back to him. James? I mean, I can see where Phil's going with the sabotage, but at the same time, if he can go to Impact and bring some people with him back to sabotage him and knowing Wardlow's always around with MJF. Yeah. Because, I mean, there's some decent people he could pull from there. But... I have a I have a sneaky feeling that he may have kind of goofed his career for right now. He may he have, or... because I know he's. He, I mean, Khan's Khan's pretty. I don't. Again, this is assuming that it's not a work. I don't. I think Khan is legit pissed off with him, which is because he did fulfill his end of the, of the contract. Now, understanding that things are good between the two organizations. Impact your initial response is like he had that right to say no. But I think that should have been worked out before they finalized on the dotted line. Yeah. With the angle. Because I think that angle would have been good for Guevara to cut to go back and then bring it back and then maybe like uh, some kind of angle against MJF bringing some guys back with him. But I don't know in between both organizations if that's going to play out. I don't think he's going to wrestle for a little while. Depending on... I mean, because he's right now in between organizations. If he was contracted to be at Impact, he should be at Impact. And he he turned that contract down. That would also, I think, insinuate that there isn't necessarily technically a contract with him at uh, AEW. 
and I could be totally wrong, but that's what I see. Well, that's being played true. out right now. That's true, but the other thing, if it is all just a giant work, this could have been the way to give Sammy time off to go do something he wants to do in his life. If it's a work. But at the same time, if if well, the... he doesn't have any injuries that we can tell, and that's being that's being reported, it doesn't necessarily mean injuries. I mean, no, no. Things yeah, on or anything. That's else. that's it too. But you would think right now in this in this climate that they would go well. Sammy, you know, wants to do whatever it is, you know, wife's expecting or whatever. Um, Something like that, but it, and the, in that would be that thing. Khan seems to be that type of guy too, but I don't know, man. He, you figure he was at the top. He was at the top of the heat when he was in the inner circle. You know, he was um, he was played off as being um, Jericho's protege yep. in so many words until MJF came in. I think it would have been interesting, hear me out, had there been a war between Guevara and Sammy and MJF. It, there may still be, depending on what happens. Right. So I guess this will be one of those things that we're going to have to wait on and kind of keep an eye on it. But, like, it kind of floored me when I found out. And then when I found out that um, they were able to utilize Black um, Tarus in his spot, not doing the same thing that Guevara, I guess, wanted to do. And again, Decay would have been a bad fit if that's who he was supposed to have gone to. But just so that it said, I think that match that they did that they had against Triple X or Triple XL was garbage. Ooh, I, I didn't see that. I look, I understand big guys moving and stuff like that, and but when you got two big guys and the bigger one, like, is just. Rolling over to the opponents. Right. And rolling over him. And that's to, I mean, you know, mind you, like, you know, he also could play that kind of storyline too with, you know, the tough, you know, the, the baddest cat taking a beating, but he comes out of it. That match, like, I didn't lot, lot, I that match did not do anything for me except piss me off. I don't like it when big guys like that are like, do that. It, it doesn't show anything of skill. Like, it doesn't show anything of skill. It's a simple story. Nothing against those guys. I'm sure they're workers. I've never seen either one of those guys in Triple XL. But what I saw that match in Decay, and so they're steamrolling over freaking um, Black Tarus. Then Decay comes in. They're beating the hell out of them. I think they ultimately lost that match. I don't. Re I can't recall. But you're not. You're not doing anything different. You can work. You prove that you you're showing me that you're showing that you can work, but that wasn't a match where there's a lot of storytelling. It was just a big guy, you know, rolling over people. I didn't like it. Now well, the other scary part with the big guy you're talking about, AC Romero, right? Didn't show it there, but I've seen him go over the top rope. I'm not saying he can't go over the top rope. I'm saying what I saw in that match. He would just, I mean, I really don't want to be insulting, and it's going to happen. He's so big, James. He's ma he's he's more massive than freaking Rhino. Yeah, Rhino's compact. and But Rhino can move. Rhino. This guy does not move. He can to a corner, to the other corner, to the ropes, like stuff like that. And I understand that it was a tag match, but like, listen, of all the tag teams that I've seen in, in my, in my viewing history, the Rockers, the Hart Foundation, the British Bulldogs, um, Jericho and the Big Show. Yeah. Those guys, like, they they told an interesting, they told, they were able to tell an interesting story in that match. Now, I understand, like, you know, the show's not the, he he's not, 
severely agile, but he he's got he, he can work with it. Well, he's a lot meaner now. He's dropped a lot of weight. I know, and I've seen him. But you know what I'm saying? Like big guys. I mean, big guys are in two get. They're either really good or they're not that great. And if they're not that great, they they're able to do other things to kind of reciprocate. But what I saw in that match was not something. There was not the match of the night type of material, at a tag match. No. Phil, did you see that? No, I I. I... I see that you sent it to me, but I never had a chance. Uh, you got to watch it because it pissed me off. <laughs> if I'm sitting here running my mouth about shit that I shouldn't be running my mouth about, right? But I know what I watched. And it wasn't a good tag match. Do those guys have a titles? Um, no. Triple XL, I don't believe they do, no. Okay. And neither does Decay. But I didn't... Like I said, I just didn't care for it. It didn't. It didn't entertain me. It just showed, you know, two rather large men. And I'm not making fun of them because I'm kind of heavy and we're all, you know, whatever. But I just it's an, it's it's no. I'm telling you no. All right. But you have to watch it. You, I mean, that to see what I'm talking about, it just was two big guys just rolling over people. I'm going to say one tall and one wide. Yeah. But the tall guy was wide, too. You know what? We're going we're gonna to watch it. <laughs> now, people may not be able to hear the audio except us, but we're going to watch it. And you're going to see, and it's not a severely long match. No, not at all. Okay. Let me bring it up. Um, where are we? Yeah, it made me mad. Money, no matter what, yeah. Right, right. I mean, in the game, in the end result is you want to make money, especially doing what they're doing at that high level. When they get that at high level, they want to make as much money as they can for as long as they can until they can't do it anymore. Mm. And hopefully, they don't get any like injuries, like Stone Cold from Owen Hart, oh. that pile driver that went wrong. Um, I mean, name it. You know, the neck injuries that Edge sustained that made him re- to make him step step back. Rob Van Dam doesn't. I don't think he even performs anymore. Yeah, it's really sad to see him. He but was. He made not some money. Do anything anymore? Yeah, he made a lot of money, but he took a lot of risk. I mean, but that was what the AC, ECW guys did. Yeah. But those wars with Sabu and him were just like, I mean, as fun as they were to watch, imagine the, just the damage. Whether it was legit or acted, they still took something out of it. Like, say they still received something out of it. Um, you know, uh, I, I, I don't know. Like I just said, like, it's just, you know, you don't, you know, we, 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 we get invested in people. Like Hogan. Hogan to me was like one of the first guys. He broke out in so many ways and so many across different media forms. And then he got to the point where he was too old to do it anymore. And then can't do it anymore. So, I mean, he's lost like a foot off his height from giving lay drops. Hip mm-hmm. replacements and stuff like that. You know, at you know, and then they start just rolling downhill. Those guys, you there's so much you get so much vested interest in a lot of these guys, and you watch them throughout their entire careers. And the next thing you know, well, they're retiring because you know their necks are so screwed up that if they do anything, they're gonna they'll they'll die, or they won't walk again. And none of us ever want to see that. But we like the matches where there's ladders involved or steel cages or people are falling from the sky and That's taking true. huge risks. He's taking huge risks. 
I don't know. But um you know, but to me AEW is doing it correctly. Their mentorship programs like the best. Those factions and those factions have a senior pe- senior people in it to help them. If they can break out of a out of dark out of the AEW dark. Yeah. No. You know. Yeah. They could build that stable and you know and just well, um, do whatever. But anyway. What I remember hearing is that they're they're still gonna try for uh, a second show on like TNT or 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 another channel. Uh, oh really? But, wow. Um that'll that'll give a little bit more exposure. Right. Uh, to others, and I, I think dark should stay the way it it yes. is. Yes, uh, showing agree. showcasing you know right unknown talent and right. and kind of helping getting people a name for themselves. So right, yeah, for sure. Um, so uh, wrestling will be now added to the repertoire of stuff that we talk about. Um. Because we're all very passionate and we have a lot of things to say about it, um, and you know, and it can be, you know, we, I mean, obviously, we'll probably be covering a lot of AEW news and stuff and and whatnot. Um, given the fact that James and I live like not that far away from Jacksonville, yeah, where they're where they're filming out of, um, and of course, I'm going to have questions for these guys too. Um, I don't know if we have time. Can you guys sum up the bullet the the bullet club or whatever that thing is? Um, that's making a comeback, and I because I don't quite understand. Like I don't know why that's a big deal. So the bullet club was formed in New Japan Pro Wrestling. Okay. Uh, I don't remember the year, but it 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 is kind of like a an NWO rehash of a bunch of guys getting together probably not so much like known names right uh like like nash hall and hogan right but um they were more like dominant a uh, dominant force and well to be fair though it what they're they're not known to us now mind you cody's one of them right, right. was was, was. But if they're saying the original is back, I think Cody is considered an original, correct? No. 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 Omega is. No. 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 Damn. The Good well, Brothers. Okay, wait. The Gallows. Wait, wait. The Good Brothers? That's what yeah. they call themselves. Wait a minute. These are the guys that almost wrecked their careers, right? Over that match they did? Yes. Phil, you remember that? Uh, what match was that? They did, they did they did a tag match against I can't remember who, and it was so bad that they had to re-edit the match because it was so bad. They were I don't know what was going on with them. I don't know if it was a work. It was it was terrible. It was a work, but Tony Khan didn't expect when they were on Dynamite. When they were filming it, that they had to cut so much about smoking cannabis, phallic different mentions, and all this other crap. Them being their New Japan selves. Say right. anything and do anything. Right. I guess they don't want that kind of... Stigma? R- yeah, exactly. But the thing when the Bullet Club started... If my memory serves me right, and Phil can correct me if I'm wrong, I might. Be. I thought one of the, <laughs> I thought one of the first iterations was Prince Devitt, right, which is now Balor, as yep. the leader because they said, "You're an outsider. You're a gaijin. You're not Japanese." And then I want to say, one form of it was. Bal or Devitt, Anderson, Gallows, and then after that, the Young Bucks were brought in. Yeah. Okay. I, I think there might have been like a couple other guys, like, uh, like, um, like some of the some of the Samoa guys, like, uh, 
I know, like, Tamatonga. You're talking about the Gorillas, the Gorillas of War. They came in, in the at the end of one iteration, the beginning of the next. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, wow. I wasn't too sure because about that. You've got Tamatonga, which really does not. He has been very vocal on social media. The Bullet Club is dead. That little symbol doesn't mean anything. You're not the Bullet Club. Do what you want. Because oh, wow. um, he literally said in a tweet, without the OGs, I can't remember his partner's name, but he's another Samoan. Because Tonga is the son of Ming, if I remember correctly. Yep. Okay. But Which you've had inter- what you met? Yeah, I met Ming last year. What? Nice. Yep. You don't send me pictures or nothing? Like, Phil. Uh, you sent me the one where you sent, you met Jay, and you don't let me know that you met Ming. Whoops. He wants that, you to get back in the wrestling story. Right, yeah, exactly right, yeah. Um, I maybe, uh, maybe a deep dive will have to be done later, because I know there's a lot of different factions. And, I mean, I'm aware that there are many different factions, but it would start to be, it's, it, it was slung to be this big thing, or a potential to be a good big thing, but I haven't heard anything since it got the initial rumbles of it. Yeah. So I'm not exactly sure. Like I don't know if it's going to be something that's going to be on the next pay per view or whatever. It's a long. It's a long run game. It's I know. Long- yeah, I heard it's like re- like I heard it's like it. I mean, I was something on YouTube that popped up, and it it was like almost an hour in that telling of the the Bullet Club. So, mm-hmm. but I want to say if. The last thing I want to say on the Bullet Club, I want to say the leaders I can remember are Prince Devitt, okay, Kenny Omega, mm-hmm. AJ Styles, because he showed up in a mask. Right. There was another one, but I don't think Cody was ever a leader. I think he was just part of the group. Okay. Wasn't what... Wasn't Cody and Kenny kind of feuding together? They were um, feuding within themselves who was the better choice to lead them. Right. Well, um, okay. And I think Kenny won that one. And that's what kind of broke away um, uh, Kenny and the Bucks. Or, yeah. uh, uh, Cody oh, and wow. The Bucks. Okay. They, they, they became more of the elite. Okay. Interesting. Um, so I think we need to kind of put a pin in it. It's getting late. James has got to be up kind of early tomorrow. When does that stop me? What, right? <laughs> uh, hey, you got filibuster. I got to go pee real quick. Um, I wish I had a whole lot of photos ready and available i'm just doing like a deep dive oh here we go so right here is me with ming or haku or where or king tonga whatever you want to call him and the barbarian nice that was at that same show uh, that was one of the one of the last appearances of Road Warrior Animal. Oh, wow! Because not long after this, uh, COVID happened, and he didn't make many more appearances. Right. Yeah. Yep. Me and Animal. That's very cool. Oh, wow. That's cool. So, uh, a buddy of mine has some old... He's got a whole stack of uh, AWA uh, old newsletters from back in the... Midnight Express. 
back in the 80s. Wow. Uh, let me see if I can find the one. But I we had a uh, animal sign it. Ooh. Uh, just give me a second. Oh, here's one. Uh, oh, wow. Scott Hall signed. Man. The bad guy. Shoot. I don't know if it's here. I think I might have given it back to him. Oh, wow. But he let me hang on to all these other 